A very warm welcome to each and everyone in line. It's 3.01 Central Europe time and we warmly welcome you to our second week of our series of web seminars, which we are conducting due to the fact that the Interpax or our trade fair in 2021 does not take place sadly. And so we at BSF thought, how can we bring our topics along to our interested audience? And so this is how we came up with our webinar series. And we are happy that you all joined today and that we can share with you an amazing topic today with two great experts in line. So we would like to talk to you about the BSF calculation of the CO2 footprint of our products. And we have two experts with us um, who you can, you can see Martin already, you cannot see Jan yet, but I think we will see Jan in a couple of seconds. And so you can see Martin already on screen, who is, um, there you go, there's also Jan, great. And so we have uh, Martin here with us, um, responsible for artificial intelligence solutions in BSF and digitalization of services and core systems. And we have um, Jan Schöneborn with us, who is a team lead for our um, LCA corporate sustainability topic in BSF. And so we are happy to have them both here to share their insights about the calculation of our CO2 footprint. My name is Nina. I'm in the communications department in the Monomers division at BSF and responsible for, uh, responsible for the communications of the polyamides business. So whenever you have a technical issue today or any questions from a technical point of view, please directly contact me via the chat functionality in WebEx and I try to help you with that. In general, before we go into our content, here are some WebEx housekeeping rules for you. So please provide your full name when you have dial-in. Um, do not appear as a dial-in user. And we have set you all per default on mute. Um, when you have a question, you have the opportunity to use the chat functionality or the Q&A function, both on the right-hand side of your WebEx tool, or you can also raise your hand virtually. Then we will unmute you and you can ask your question directly to our two speakers. We will answer all your questions after the session, so after Jan and Martin's presentation. We would like to ask you, please turn off your video when you have turned it on. We as speakers will have turned it on for sure, but in general, I will also turn it off to save some bandwidth in a couple of minutes. We recommend you to, vo to use voice over IP connection, so the call using computer function. And we also would like to raise your attention to the topic that we will record the session today to all the participants who are not able to join. We will provide the content, so the presentation, and also the recording of the session today at our internet website uh, in um, mid, uh, mid of this week. And you will all receive an email when this is available. Just for your information, you can only see yourself in line and for sure <laughs> the three of us. Um, but be aware we have about 125 people in line already. So due to data protection reasons, you only see yourself. And with that, I can hand over the ball to Jan and we, or I personally also look forward to your both presentation. So please Jan, go ahead. Very warm welcome from my side as well. This is Jan Schönerbaum speaking. I'm um, in the BSF corporate sustainability team. And I'm leading a team for lifecycle assessment experts, and I'm also heading our internal project for the automated calculation of product count footprints. It's my great pleasure today to be here with you and to tell you a little bit more about this. Yeah, and this is Martin um, speaking. Um, I'm in the Department of AI Solutions, so digitalization of our core systems. Um, together with Jan, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the solution we developed in-house today. From my background, I studied maths and political science, and I'm usually somewhere at the connection between uh, internal colleagues who need a digital solution and our internal colleagues who provide this digital solution. Okay, super. So let's get started with our webinar on the topic of calculation of CO2 footprints for the entire sales product portfolio of BSF. Um, let me go to the next slide here. Here we go. So the talk is structured as follows. We will first give you a bit of a background on the climate change topic and our BSF CO2 target. Um, then we will talk about our motivation to actually provide carbon footprints for our portfolio. 
then uh, go into the question how the carbon footprints are actually calculated and then provide a, an outlook and some information about the timeline of our project before we conclude with a summary at the end, of course. So starting with the introduction, um, we are a chemical company and we are operating, um, of course, plants where energy is consumed. So to make chemicals, to transform materials from A to B, you need an input of um, heating, um, electricity, gas, or, or, or steam, for example. And sometimes the processes even are a direct source of CO2. And this um, um, is, of course, um, associated with an impact on, on our climate. It is by now well understood that this anthropogenic effect of uh, greenhouse gas emissions is changing, has long-term effects uh, on our climate, long-lasting changes in our environment are associated with that, which puts the basis of our lives and the lives of our children into danger. Um, when we talk about greenhouse gases, we are talking about a bunch of different gases, um, but we all summarize them under the umbrella term, so to say, greenhouse gases or CO2 equivalent emissions. Um, because this is such an important uh, topic for all of us, BSF is taking action and uh, uh, is becoming active to protect uh, the climate. Therefore, BSF supports the objectives of the Paris Agreement to limit the global warming to well below 2, 20, 2 degrees centigrade. And it's not uh, a new topic for BSF. Uh, it's really some a topic that has been close to our minds and hearts already for quite some long time. And as Martin will show you now, it is an essential part and task of our, of our corporate strategy. Yeah, one yeah. of our corporate strategy right now um, is called under the headline CO2 neutral close until 2030. Um, we tried uh, to put on that one chart a little bit a feeling of, of magnitude what we are talking about. Obviously, we as a chemical um, um, industry are kind of um, heavily using electricity, but also during processes emitting CO2 and CO2 equivalent gases to the atmosphere. Um, what you see here is our commitment to grow um, CO2 neutral from 2018 to 2030. So this means a significant increase in production volumes, uh, but a stable CO2 emission, which leads then to a significant lower specific CO2 emission per kilogram product um, we produce. What's important from our perspective is that we did not start in 2015, 2016, 2017 with CO2 emissions and looking at those and trying to decrease them. But if you compare it to 1990, for example, we already have a significant way behind us and we would say a pretty successful significant way behind us in decreasing our emissions to the atmosphere at the same time um, increasing our production volume. And how we're going to tackle this from 2018 to 2030 or from 2021 to 2030 um, is on the next chart with Jan. Okay, so um, the key to this is the carbon management program at BASF. Um, this is the lever uh, with which how we want to reduce our um, greenhouse gas emissions. First, keep them constant until 2030, as has been said, and then reduce them beyond 2030 significantly. So the carbon management program has um, is a collection of different activities, and it has main three three main pillars. Uh, one of them is um, the uh, aim to reduce the uh, to increase the production and process efficiency to make our plants even more efficient and further optimize the resource use in our processes. The key to this is really operational excellence, both in optimizing the existing plants and asset base, and, and also when constructing new plants like our new integrated Verbund site in uh, China. The second pillar is uh, the purchase of renewable energy. We have a, an ambitious uh, renewable energy roadmap um, where we will increase significant share of the green power that goes into our operations. And third and last, um, we are investing heavily into a R&D program uh, to develop breakthrough technologies in chemical processes um, that will allow us, or that should allow us to further and significantly reduce the carbon dioxide emissions um, beyond the 2030 goal, also uh, from 2030 onward. <clears throat> So um, with that background, um, we would now uh, like to uh, talk to you a little bit through our motivation to provide carbon footprints of products for our portfolio. 
Yeah, and, and starting uh, with the most important thing, our industry and, and why there is an increasing demand for industry. Let's say you can go to more or less each and every web browser search tool you might want to prefer if you go in there and look for something like scope three greenhouse gas emission targets and, and going to uh, initiatives like um, science based targets. Um, you will find plenty of, of, of examples, much more than the, than the ones I have chosen here. On the chart, but just to give you a glimpse on, on, on that, let's say Upshell, for example, um, I'm committed to reduce uh, scope three emissions by 14% up to 2030 based on 2019. DSM wants to reduce by 28% um, based on 2016. Henkel therefore wants also to reduce by 30%. And uh, VW, for example, wants to have 100% renewable energy in the production of their battery cells. This is just a glimpse on, on several different examples, which should highlight that, let's say, we think that the product carbon footprint and knowing about your product carbon footprint is an essential part in our industry. And we wanted to drive this on a completely new level and not just having one, two, three, a hundred product carbon footprints, but want to scale it up to our full portfolio. So, um, what is that product carbon footprint that we are now talking about? Um, the product carbon footprint uh, summarizes the specific greenhouse gas emissions that are associated with making a product and throughout the life cycle of the product. Um, so, when I say specific amounts, then I mean uh, it's the amount of greenhouse gases uh, per a, say, kilo kilogram or per a ton of a specific product. And when we say life cycle, we typically talk about two different um, yeah, um, boundaries here. First one is the so-called cradle to gate boundary, where we summarize the greenhouse gases along the value chain from the point of the extraction of raw materials up to the point where the ready-made sales product leaves our BSF gate out to the customer. That would be the cradle to gate calculation. And other than that, we are also um, 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 we also have the perspective of the cradle to grave, which then would also take into account uh, the use phase, the application of the products downstream and uh, then the end of life. Um, however, for the uh, purpose of the current uh, talk, we will focus on the cradle to gate calculation. So these are, say, the, uh, the backpacks, the CO2 backpacks that our players and products bring with them when they are uh, used as raw materials um, in our in our customers processes and this is what what our customers are mostly interested in now um, they want to use buy from us to inform their scope 3 greenhouse gas reporting to support a target tracking and setting um, product design and labeling and also to steer offsetting measures more accurately one important driver is the science-based target initiative that helps companies uh, to formulate and track um, progress on reducing greenhouse gas emissions in their own operations and in their value chains. Um, so um, next to our customers, there's also increasing interest from the investor side on um, CO2 transparency in value chains. Just to name a few examples here is the CDP carbon disclosure project or TCFD initiatives. And um, also, um, if you look at uh, the EU, in the EU taxonomy, there are already, um, um, is already the idea proposed uh, to use carbon footprints um, to classify products into um, yeah, taxonomy conform or not conform. There are also ideas around uh, legislation or regulation, I should say, um, for example, in the field of batteries, um, where carbon footprints of batteries could be used as a criterion um, to um, uh, regulate access to the European market. So this has become a very, very important topic for the entire industry, and therefore BSF has decided um, to also um, yeah, invest more into this topic. Um, and um, this is what um, we are going to uh, um, explain here later at some, with, our, with our new carbon footprint calculation tool. Yeah, and one last chart in that section. Um, obviously, we're talking today about transparency and, and, and the tool we're um, explaining and, and showing to you in fact is, let's say, bringing you transparency on product carbon footprints of BASF. Um, but we know, let's say, we also know what's going on in, in the industry. Um, and there we also have offers, just as a little glimpse and information for you, we have offers to reduce 
significantly the carbon footprint. One um, and very well used in DSF is the biomass balance approach. Um, I'm not going to go into details here. I think there has been a webinar in the Interpack with Frank Reil. Um, you might most likely also on the website where you find our video, find the video from um, this one. But the idea is really to, to give you an offer um, to not only get product count footprint numbers for us, for example, for an ultra meet, uh, but also get reduced options of them and, and pretty easy reduced options, which are in here as, as drop in products. So no change in specification, but a reduced product carbon footprint. But as said, details um, are better found in that other webinar. Today, we are rather talking about the transparency um, of product carbon footprints and how we achieved it for the food portfolio. Okay. So then we will turn now to the question, how are the carbon footprints actually calculated in practice? So I would like to start with um, changing a little bit the perspective and uh, as an example name here, a personal footprint cal calculator. There are um, different uh, examples of that on the, inter on the web, you can find them. And this one is, uh, I think, a nice one made by our colleagues from Henkel. Um, and um, with this footprint calculator, you can calculate your own personal carbon footprint. And in order to do so, um, this calculator will ask you to enter quite a bit of data on your behavior. Yeah? I mean, um, how do you heat your house? Um, how do you, uh, what kind of food do you, t what kind of food do you eat? What do you prefer? How is your mobility behavior? And so on and so forth. And this is what we, um, in, in the experts, call uh, so-called activity data. Um, uh, so basically, how much of what do you do? Um, and um, once you have collected all this information, you can enter that into the tool and within the tool, then uh, these amounts like so and so much uh, kilowatt hours of natural gas that you use for your heating of your house will be uh, multiplied with so-called emission factors. And these emission factors tell then um, or uh, then have the information how much CO2 equivalent emissions come with using, say, one kilowatt hour of natural gas for heating. Yeah. So these two components are uh, essential. And the third part is then the so-called allocation. So imagine you are sharing your house with your family, then the calculator will also decide how much of the CO2 emissions basically belong to you personally uh, versus uh, the rest of your family. So these are kind of like the same patterns um, that we have uh, when we talk about the carbon footprints of products. <clears throat> However, for uh, calculating the carbon footprint of a chemical product, um, you have to look uh, into detail into the production um, network, so to say, the value chain or the process network um, of making a particular example here. This is a polyamide 6 and ultra emit material uh, for packaging. Um, so in this case, uh, what we do is we extract this activity data. So how much natural gas, how much raw materials, uh, how much steam and so on. Uh, is uh, happening in each of these single uh, process steps uh, within our operations. Um, and um, also, if there are process steps that have direct emissions of greenhouse gases, they are also considered. No? So these and then to taken together are the so-called scope 1 and scope 2 emissions um, from our own operations. No? Um, and then we combine this information um, with the CO2 emission factors uh, for steam and electricity, for example, we produced it um, partly on site. There we know how much CO2 we emit for making steam and electricity. But if we buy purchase energy um, from, uh, from, from external energy uh, providers, then we have market-based emission factors then, uh, that we can um, use to calculate the CO2 impact of our energy demand. We also combine um, then our um, raw material, the, the list of raw materials that we need to produce uh, this particular uh, product, for example, here in this case, it's benzene, sulfur, natural gas, um, with the emission factors for those materials and with the activity data, that means with the amounts, with the specific amounts that are needed. And if we sum up this, um, uh, all these different contributions, um, we arrive at the specific carbon footprint of this ultramic material. And this is just one example. Um, you need to do this and uh, you need to be able to do this um, for a large number of different products. And in the BSF world, we are um, producing a um, wide variety of uh, products from petrochemicals to, to intermediates to fine chemicals all the way to um, aroma chemicals and even precious metal catalysts. So uh, you need a basically universal approach um, to uh, calculate the carbon footprints of all these different materials. Mm -hmm. 
order to do so, um, we calculate um, the carbon footprint based on the primary data of our own plants. Uh, we take this information from our uh, internal um, IT systems. Um, so this is um, <coughs> uh, basically, well, um, I think the, the best thing that you can get né, in terms of uh, data quality for the um, um, Raw material data, um, we apply emission factors from um, databases. So um, here um, we are relying on commercial providers, for example, or public databases for emission factors of raw materials. Um, for the experts, um, this uh, approach that we take here is sometimes also referred to as the bottom up approach or LCA type approach. And because it is um, looking at the uh, contributions of the processes only that are contributing and that are really contributing to a specific product. Yeah. So we, we basically consolidate the, late, the data along the specific cradle to gate process network of, of the given products. Um, this whole uh, logic is built on the pertinent ISO standard, the ISO 14067 for carbon footprints of products, which in turn is based on the well known ISO standard 14044 for life cycle assessment. And additionally, this calculation methodology is aligned with the greenhouse gas protocol product standard. I should also add that uh, methodologies to quantify sustainability performance also on product level is not a new topic for us uh, in BASF. There is 25 years of experience in methodologies, starting with uh, eco-efficiency analysis, um, life cycle assessments and footprints. Um, so we have produced um, carbon footprints for materials since 2008, uh, and we are also um, one of the first to report a corporate carbon footprint in the chemical sector. Yes, and based on this kind of uh, 25 years of experience, I think that the really new thing is that, that BSF has started uh, like one and a half um, years ago to combine two strengths or two, two things we would consider the strengths. The one is the experience in sustainability and sustainability assessment, and the second one is, is the strength of digitalization in our industry. Um, and bringing those together, we were able to bring those um, uh, carbon footprint calculations on a completely uh, new level with having it available for the full portfolio. How did we do it? Um, and Jan showed it a, a second ago on this one chart. Um, the input factors are rather clear and straightforward. So you have raw materials, you, you have energy, which is going in and you have production plants. Um, the complexity, which is made up in this tool, which we developed in-house, um, is that you need to get all together. Um, and then getting this all together, what we call harmonization of the data input is based on our ERP system. So the enterprise resource planning uh, system databases we have for environmental health and safety information, um, as well as procurement databases. You see a bit of a complexity for BSF, the 700 production plants. So this means BSF is not a company which is purchasing some material, having two production steps and then have a sales product. This means we have also the need to get all of our production steps, which are in our own operations with our own primary data together into one model. Uh, we have achieved that by a pretty efficient, we would say matrix solver algorithm, which is resolving all those internal steps, which come one after the other. Um, and we have put on top of that, as we know from the experience with digitalization, that the best number you have is, is not as much worth if you don't have a good way to communicate it to your internal colleagues or to the external world. We have put on that state-of-the-art graph visualization where you can also follow kind of visually uh, your carbon contributions in your network. If we take those figures together, what we estimate, we come up, as Jan said, with our corporate carbon footprint we have, which is a, a good sign. And so far, uh, we are still working also on the raw materials part where we are, as mentioned, using third party data until now, but we want to look into rather supplier specific data instead of third party data on that. The digital solution is running. It's updated once a year to our planning right now and providing the new figures as obviously the input factors are changing. So the production processes are changing. The raw materials might change. The energy consumption might change. So we have an update from uh, once a year. That's roughly in a nutshell the solution we have, and I think um, Jan has one on the outlook now, and then we can come to the Q and A. Yeah. Okay. So um, where do we stand with um, our project to calculate the carbon footprints of our entire portfolio? As Martin has already said, um, the IT project was started in January last year. 
Um, we did have our core setup of the IT running uh, in summer last year, where we then were able to calculate first results uh, for the carbon footprints of products. And since then, um, we have been starting, uh, or we have started to work on the validation of this data, of these results. Um, but the overall implementation of the IT project is planned to be uh, finalized uh, by quarter three this year. As I said, the validation is already going on since quite some time. This is maybe one very important information also here for you. Um, we will communicate carbon footprints of product only to um, customers uh, where BSF has a business relationship with. Um, so it is not intended and not planned to publish the carbon footprint data of BSF products um, to the general public, uh, only to those parties uh, where there is an actual business relationship. Um, and this is only um, going to happen after um, uh, the data points have been validated. This is a um, quite labor intensive exercise. I have to say that we do, and I'm very grateful here for the collaboration with our internal technology and controlling experts um, that are doing a great job um, to go through the carbon footprint data of their portfolios and analyzing if everything yeah, is correct. Um, so and this exercise is planned to be finalized by the end of this year. So then from then on, um, we should be ready to, to hand out these uh, results. In parallel, um, we are also working on a um, certification of our carbon footprint methodology. Uh, we aim to, we were working here with a, a verification provider, an independent verification provider um, that should, uh, and we are uh, aiming at um, certification that states that our methodology that we have implemented in this tool is in fact compliant or conform with the uh, ISO standard for carbon footprint of products. And the goal is to obtain um, the verification statement um, um, somewhere in the second quarter this year. This uh, certification um, should um, also support yeah, the reliability um, yeah, and conformity, as I said, of our calculated numbers um, with the relevant standard. Talking about standards, um, I have to add that um, with um, the existing base, the Greenhouse Gas Protocol Product Standard and the ISO 4067, there is already a very good basis for calculation of carbon footprints of products. However, um, there are still there's still a bit of room, room for uh, interpretation in these standards, and due to this fact, um, it is not guaranteed that the carbon footprints that we calculate at BSF are, in, in terms of the methodology, 100% comparable to carbon footprints uh, produced by other companies or other institutions, for example. And this is because, as I said, there is a room for making choices how to allocate basically carbon dioxide emissions between products that are, for example, coming from the same plant, from the same process. Um, and that's why we are also stressing that at the moment, the comparability of the carbon footprints that we produce is limited or is yeah, kind of flawed a little bit by this, uh, by this fact. Yeah. Comparability uh, versus the numbers produced by others, that is. So um, that is why BSF has taken also action and is um, engaging in um, working on different levels uh, on more detailed specifications for individual production processes and, and products to close these gaps basically and make the, um, the guidance more stringent and then also to achieve the situation where the carbon footprints of different companies, different institutions can be compared on a fair basis. And some examples for initiatives um, that are meant to advance the PCF data consistency and also to come up with new ways of collecting and sharing data are these three here where we are participating. Um, one is the value chain carbon transparency pathfinder project hosted by the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. There are a large number of um, bigger corporations has teamed up um, to come up with a methodology and a data collection and sharing approach um, along the value chain um, to increase the transparency of greenhouse gas emissions on the specific product level up to the point where they potentially reach the retail market. Um, and this is a cross-industry, uh, cross uh, cross-sector initiative, basically. 
Then more specifically to the chemical sector, um, there is the uh, second part. This is the Together for Sustainability initiative. This is a initiative uh, founded by the chemical uh, industry and their suppliers um, to collect sustainability related information um, on the supply chain. And um, the TFS initiative has recently extended its sustainability program to also include a data collection approach and methodology for GHG scope three emissions. So that is that means also um, the supplier or the value chain emissions. And uh, likewise, there are also um, um, in this work stream, there are also packages dealing with the methodological questions, these closing the gaps in the standards, as I called it, and also a data collection approach uh, to practically then um, increase the flow of primary data from, from, from suppliers to customers. And last but not least, uh, the automotive sector has also currently um, just recently <coughs> started a new initiative. Um, BSF has also joined recently. This is the Catena X um, initiative. Um, and there, um, the, the partners are working on a, a platform solution that has actually yeah, many different um, aspects. Uh, from you know part traceability um, to um, yeah, reliability of supply, but one important aspect here, and this is why it's relevant in this context, is also sustainability, and particularly also greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so to then be able to at the end calculate the carbon footprint of the cars, and, and more accurately and more based on more primary data. Yeah, so exciting to see all these dynamics in the market. I could go on and name a bit more, even some more initiatives that are underway. Um, but these are the ones where we are currently as BSF putting putting a little bit of a focus on. Okay, so we are already um, at the end of our talk. I would like to wrap up the talk by giving you a summary. So um, with our new uh, automated carbon footprint calculation approach, we aim to provide more transparency for our customers on the specific carbon footprints of our products that we produce. Um, it should be stressed maybe again that um, our carbon footprints are based on, on actual data from our processes. So these are not theoretical numbers, but these are really the, the numbers emerging or coming out of our primary process data and our actual stated greenhouse gas emissions um, on the product level. Um, we have um, created a, a new digital solution uh, that is able to calculate these cradle to gate product carbon footprints automatically for the entire portfolio of around 45,000 sales products, um, which has been for us uh, a necessi necessity to say so, uh, I can say, because otherwise it would have been just too time consuming uh, to do this uh, manually, um, but also now has the big advantage um, that we have a consistent approach and a, a unique single point of truth for our BSF calculation uh, of the product carbon footprints. Um, so that means we have achieved this uh, here in the third bullet point, uh, the goal to have consistent data for the global portfolio. We uh, are dedicated and working heavily on validating these uh, numbers currently, and we target to be able to communicate um, validated numbers by end of 2021. Um, as I said, the methodological choices and, and the, the things that we now do here are based on a long-standing experience uh, in quantifying sustainability performance. Um, and um, we are engaging um, in establishing standards um, to make uh, carbon footprinting even more mainstream and also more useful in, um, in cross-industry approaches and, and cross-customer uh, cross or, say, uh, cross-company networks. Yeah, so... Um, Thank you very much uh, for your attention. I hope we were able to give you some interesting insights into what we have been doing here in the last one and a half years. BASF. We create chemistry.